Cheers. This is lush. This is ironic. I'm always like impressed with how nice it is. Like you know when you, you have a favourite drink, but each time you pour it you're like, that's really good. I get that with whiskey and coke, I'm like, I don't even like whiskey and coke that much. I pour out a glass and I'm like, oh. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with Adam again Hello there. for another sit down in our new humble abode. So this video is a partnership with Pura Thrive and during doing my research of them and of the topic in general that we're gonna be talking about and covering today, I actually found out that it is B12 Awareness Week next month, September the 19th, which I don't think even Adam knew about nope. so we're a little bit early <laughs> at the end of the day this is like a lifelong thing and it's not like just in that particular week it needs to be discussed when we cover the things that you can kind of do to help having a deficiency we are gonna like go over some tips it's not the right word tips tricks or like actual proper like medication you people can mm. take and and also we're going to be trying out a product in the video as well there was something about this one in particular which urged me to want to try it more but we'll go into that but that links to do with more of adam's conditiono mm -hmm. um or your disease which i will say as a term for it because it is and i think for some reason that makes it seem more like real in a weird way like when you say someone has a disease you think oh! i always feel like i cringe when when i say that's a disease because I, I always i'm the mm -hmm. kind of person who doesn't like to make people feel sorry for us and like want yeah. to do things for me to help us and stuff i just like to kind of do me and just Everyone else just know that I'm okay. And um, yeah. if I go around saying like, oh, I've got a disease, I feel like people will start to think, oh, we'll have to do things for you or like to <laughs> to be like super aware of it or to like help you and stuff like that. And I don't want, I don't want that. It makes us cringe to think of that. Generally people would say like every day of my life, like, are you feeling okay? You you look like you're unwell. It was actually my um, ex's parents. I know I'm a really pale person. And obviously at the time I was like paler than I am now. <laughs> I don't shock horror. <laughs> to be fair, I but, look more pale than you today. I think it's because I'm wearing white. Yeah. <laughs> you got makeup on as well. Yeah. But anyway. Was it your, like, eyes? Why, how so, can you look ill? I always look quite tired anyway, because I've always got, like, bags under my eyes, and I've always got really pale skin and stuff. So, like, you look kind of tired? Like, you know when you have, like, kind of a, like, a really pale, yellowish kind of complexion, right. and you just look unhealthy? Maybe the way I kind of did things, I came across to people seemed as if I wasn't all like with it. And they were like, why don't you just go and get a blood test just to find out nothing serious is going on? And I was like, fair enough, I hate needles. So that was like, at that moment I was like, right, that's kind of a wall for me to get past, like for me to be be like, okay. Uh, and it, but it's worth it in the long run because you find out if there's anything really wrong with you anyway. So so I went to have a blood test. I, had, I think I had a few. The nature of the disease that I have, it's quite hard to detect the way that they um, test for them. It's quite hard to drill into it that specific uh, disease, which is a another issue anyway, because fr from that, there's a lot of people who kind of go undiagnosed mm -hmm. or misdiagnosed, or there is a problem around the way that it's diagnosed. But anyway, I was diagnosed and they told me that I had pernicious anemia. And um, obviously I've heard of anemia before. Uh, anemia is just generally a, like a deficiency in like iron typically and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of did some research. I asked them to explain what it was and I, they were like so much confident with it, but they were like, if you want to try having tablets, like B12 tablets to, to kind of get your levels back up and we'll test you again. You can either try that, but it's probably not going to work because we think you've got pernicious anemia or uh, the ultimate solution is you're going to have to have injections for the rest of your life. So obviously I was like, well, I'd rather take the chance of having tablets for a little bit and see if it helps. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can avoid having injections for the rest of my life and being misdiagnosed, mm -hmm. and uh, honestly it didn't really do anything at all. Um, if anything, it would just be a placebo effect. I went yeah. back to the doctors, had another blood test, which I hated. <laughs> But they basically said that, yeah, your B12 levels are still really low. They're still the same. They haven't been helped. Um, so they said you basically have pernicious, pernicious anemia. Um, yeah, what that means is that my body just doesn't absorb B12 like in natural ways. So from food, from drinks, uh, from anything I consume, basically. Part of this video as well, I want to kind of like separate um, being B12 deficient to being, to having pernicious... Pernicious anemia. <laughs> Pernicious anemia, because I, th I thought they were the same thing. They're two very different things. Like one, 
you can recover. Well, any vitamin deficiency you can recover from yeah. unless it's unless it's caused by a disease or a, a condition. Right. That. So when you first went to the doctors, were they like, "Well, you're definitely you definitely have B12 deficiency," but they weren't sure whether it was pernicious anemia. Yeah. Okay. So um, I mean, they didn't tell me that exactly, but I would assume that's probably what I would assume they just saw my levels were low and they thought my diet's okay. Um, I eat meat and stuff, which is one of the primary sources of b12 anyway mm. but yeah it's interesting like you said like when, when when you go around and say to people like you have a deficiency like if you say oh i've got a b12 deficiency people just then say well why don't you eat more like uh mm. red meat so why don't you just have tablets to supplement it and then like you have to kind of go on like a, a five ten minute like explaining so yeah basically uh they said i need jabs for life uh pernicious anemia actually means like deadly anemia and uh it was called that because back in the day when we didn't have the technology that we do today, people died from it because there was no way to treat it. If pernicious anemia goes untreated, your body can start to shut down, so you like you like start losing um, feeling in your limbs, like your legs and stuff, and they would eventually just stop working. You'd probably start developing like dementia and stuff like that, like neurological uh, diseases. And um, anything kind of to do with blood circulation as well so like organs yeah, you'd, would you'd be a lot more um, susceptible to have like maybe like heart failures and stuff like that because mm -hmm. of it you can imagine like if your body's not pumping around the right things yeah. things will start shutting down basically yeah. and it'll affect your brain as well when your body uh, doesn't produce a certain um, I think it's intrinsic factor and, and what that does is that absorbs the, uh, the B12 into your body um, if you don't have that, then the B12 just gets flushed through your body, so it doesn't get absorbed into your body, basically. When it's not absorbed into your body, you don't have healthy red blood cells. And uh, like Ellie was saying, like, that could affect like your organs and stuff, and like your heart, your, like to your brain. You're basically like starving your brain of oxygen and stuff like that. Right. Uh, hence your body just kind of slowly shutting down over time. There's having like a low B12 count because you're not eating the right things or... Something else that's causing or it. Being or being pregnant. Being, yeah, being pregnant or being a vegetarian because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of B12 in uh, vegetarian foods yeah. typically. There obviously is some alternatives, but... And then there's, like, your body rejects the B12. Yeah. So even if if he sat and ate, like, livers all day long, which is high in B12, <laughs> his body's just going to be like, yeah. nah, and just pee it out. Is that what happens? Pretty much, yeah. So and this can be, sorry, developed, like, in later life. You're not born with it. You can trigger it from being a vegetarian, which is, like, petrifying to think that you can go from, like, perfectly fine to like not giving your body the right vitamins the next minute you're on jabs for the rest of your life. And the crazy thing about it is it's not even that long ago people were dying from it. How far it's kind of come so quick so I, that it kind yeah, of just I doesn't feel, mean as much anymore. I feel really lucky. So if there was like a zombie apocalypse, I'd have to drag him around. <laughs> <laughs> or buy loads of bulk B12 yeah, injections. Yeah, I'd, like, I'd have to like invade some um, <laughs> pharmacy somewhere and just like get all the B12s. I'd have to Ooh. learn how to make it. That leads me to the next thing. You were saying this doctor was telling you like, we can do something about it. Like we can make it so you live a normal lifestyle. And like, obviously to someone who's like been tired for a long time is going to be like, cool. However, it's yeah. not as straightforward as that. I, I think it's kind of misunderstood by people who don't have it. <laughs> Which is the same with everything really, isn't it? Like, yeah. if you don't have a condition, you go by facts of what you can see, like what's black and white, and not necessarily how the people feel. But to be fair, like a doctor has taught a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't necessarily specialize in that field. So they've probably been taught that like, um, B12 deficiency can be um, moderated and controlled by giving every three months uh, injections. Uh -huh. And that's all they really know. But doctors aren't willing to, to change uh, the frequency for a lot of people. And some people actually self-inject. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, something you'd have to really be careful with and Which, look into. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It sounds scary, like when you think self-inject, like what? But you can't... What you've taught me is you can't, you can't overdose, overdose on B12. On B12. And no. for a doctor to say, like, I'm not willing to give you more injections more regularly is bonkers to me because it, I don't know if it's like a fun thing, but I've even looked into that and it's not even that expensive to get no. B12 injections. So I honestly think that it's just like a kind of misunderstanding, even from yeah. doctors, that it's not good to have too much of B12. When when your body has too much of it, it you just pee it out. Yeah, some people self-inject, but what I was wanting to do as a first kind of 
thing really is to get the frequency as uh, close together as possible for each injection to help because mm -hmm. uh, I still feel that I suffer quite a bit with it even though I get injections for it as do many people with the, the disease. How often do you get jabs? So I, I managed to get mine down to 10 weeks every 10 weeks it's usually t uh, 12 weeks I think it used to be in the past it used to be every month but then they obviously extended that and said oh people with that condition are fine to have it every three months mm -hmm. and someone decided that and that's how it's been since and I've, I've spoken to nurses who've got the condition as well and they've even said like oh when i was younger i used to get them every four weeks but since they changed it to every three months i really struggle with it now and, she, and they were saying like I can't sit and watch TV without falling asleep and stuff like that. I'm surprised that as nurses they wouldn't self inject unless they're not they're not supposed to tell you that. Yeah, they probably just <laughs> do it behind closed doors. I definitely would. And that's something I'm looking into, but that's another story. Uh, they were basically saying that like we're gonna give you these injections. It's gonna make you feel much more like healthy. It's gonna make you feel more awake start getting me brain working more and it's gonna get me body like to feel more active and stuff you know adam's like i'm gonna become sonic so i was like i can't wait for these effects to start kicking in <laughs> but the reality of it is although the injections obviously work to keep your body going the frequency of what you get them and like i don't know it might be the amount that they give you or something like that it, it doesn't make a huge difference you feel, you do feel better afterwards but it's i mean they obviously work they stop you from dying <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean like whether it's just stopping you from dying or giving you this uh, much better quality of life is a different yeah. story. Yeah, it's more of just like giving you the basic need to live. Yeah. I feel like in the future they'll probably come up with something that actually gives you an energy boost as well. I feel like that, that's not really their focus. Yeah. Their focus is probably getting the things pumped around that need to and like st stopping you from like <laughs> having organs failing. But then yeah, you get promised that you're gonna be like everyone else. And I was like, Ooh, like he's gonna be like a different person. It's gonna be really weird, but you're not. Like so you have I've, your moments. Like the next day, I think you feel yeah. a little bit more pumped. It's not like having an energy drink. Uh, <laughs> it's more because like when you when you're kind of do your next job, you kind of feel mm. like some some people are like different with it. Like some people are okay with it. Some people feel like they really need it more regularly. So it kind of, as like your body like kind of uses the B12 over the weeks that you have to wait until the next job. I, I personally start to feel a bit achy. Like my body starts mm. to feel achy and I feel like even small things are really quite tiring. I, I struggle with like meetings at work and stuff. Like if I'm sat in a room having a meeting with someone and like naturally you aren't really that interested in the meeting anyway. So it, <laughs> it's kind of boring in itself. I find it really difficult to stay awake, like genuinely stay awake. People will know that feeling, but for him it's like enhanced. Like it's more that it's actually stopping him from progressing properly at work. Whereas everyone else will just kind of know it sucks, but be able to get on with it, but you yeah. physically can't. And also something I noticed with him is he always needs to be like stimulated. That sounds weird. No, no, it's true. I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but in a way, the closest I can kind of compare this to is like with a child they need to be stimulated like all the time because yeah. otherwise they just turn off then they'll get distracted and do something they yeah, shouldn't they'll do. Yeah, they get bored, yeah. But with him it's more just like he needs that to kind of just it's like function. An, it, it, it's like a constant <laughs> adrenaline rush. Like I, I kind of rely on that to feel normal. <laughs> yeah, which is why you've, you've really wanted to be able to have jabs more often because yeah. you don't want to have to rely on always needing... Like he always has his phone in his hand. He, he's always playing games or something, doing something on his phone. Because if he's not, like he's, he struggles with that. Yeah. Like if we're just doing something that's chill, I, sometimes I like having no technology on, sitting in like a forest or even in the bath or something. If I'm doing that with Adam, like he'll be like- I can't do this. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I, I, like things like baths is a good example. He'll die. Like, if, <laughs> <laughs> I look at him and he's like, <laughs> like, like genuinely, like people will say, like, oh, baths the most relaxing thing in the world. <laughs> if I'm put in a, in a situation where I'm getting too relaxed, I'll just start to pass out slowly. <laughs> I can generally sleep really easily. That's probably <laughs> yeah. one of the upsides of it. <laughs> yeah. Ten minutes ago, he was going. I'm not very tired. I should be more tired than I am. I'm not going to be able to sleep. And then he's like... <laughs> Generally, I struggle to sleep like the following, within the following couple of nights after the jab because my mind's like racing, because I'm thinking about a lot of things and because I just feel a bit buzzed like in the brain. Mm -hmm. I struggle, I feel that like I, I need more sleep than other people. And I, I often feel the need to kind of 
stimulate myself with like snacks yeah. <laughs> more than probably other people do like to keep my hands busy to keep myself feeling like I'm getting some sort of energy boost from like food or drink so I'll eat and drink a lot of unhealthy stuff to try and give myself like a sugar rush I don't typically like approach situations like going into a new job and then kind of giving my boss like a one-to-one -one talk about oh, like yeah. how I'm gonna struggle on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. compared to the average person. Like hi I'm working for your company by the way yeah. I might be slow and uh, some days I don't want to do much. <laughs> it's something if you're gonna bring up you probably want to bring up later but yeah. at the same time you don't want them to like be harsh on you for struggling with things that you can't help. Even things like, for some people, genuinely, I think, like a nap at lunchtime would help loads, mm. but that's not something that most places cater for. Or even like, if, if you feel the need to work short hours one day, uh, to have like flexible hours sort of thing. Breathless. It, yeah, that's another thing actually. I've, I've got a really crap sinus uh, system anyway, so I've always like... It's a whole nother video. I've always got like a block nose and stuff. As you can tell, it sounds like I've got a cold. I don't have a cold. I do get breathless sometimes. Like, I, I yawn quite a lot. There's not really oxygen to get to my yeah. brain as much as the normal person, so I'm like, my body just yawns. My body's like... <laughs> yeah, and it, as a result of that, I struggle to do like active things, like exercising and stuff. Like, I get quite tired after like small... Um, events and stuff like that. Basically, does anyone want him? I'm selling him. He's broke. <laughs> Send us back. Get a refund. <laughs> I want a refund, Tinder. You gave me a broken boyfriend. <laughs> Thanks to technology, you can manage. Yeah, exactly. If so, you're born in another era, then... That's it. Maybe not. So, <laughs> what, what would you say is generally the passive effects of spilled out to you maybe this is just me because i have like my own way of thinking but it took me a while to actually understand it i couldn't really work out like why all these things were linked you literally told me about this by text before we'd even like met but i was telling him because i wasn't at this point very well and i was like i have quite a, a few issues of anxiety and all yeah. this and then you were like, right, my turn then. And then you were like, I've got this thing and this is what it means. And are you put off me? And I was like, I'm confused about why would that put me off him? Like I was confused about why you were worried. But now I've realized how actually somebody with a totally different lifestyle to me could see that and be like, yeah. I don't want to sound horrible. You could put restrictions on certain things that you want to do in life. Yeah. Like so I think that's the biggest bit of advice I'd say to someone who has a partner or is a partner of someone with it educate yourself because then you start linking the dots a bit more and things start like making sense remembering and like reminding myself that it is something that is there like it exists basically because it's a invisible disease i'm not constantly reminded about it like if you were in a wheelchair right i'm gonna remember oh, yeah. i should consider like where we go is it wheelchair accessible and it's obvious to the world yeah but with, but with this, I do forget, even as someone who's with you every day, I'm not going to constantly be like, it's my boyfriend who has a disease. Like, <laughs> you're just my boyfriend. So when you get tired or whatever, whatever, I'm just thinking, why is he tired? Like, what have we done recently? And it's hard not to take things like that personally as well. For instance, when I take you to the spiritualist church. Yeah. So you're like sat there and it's very quiet and calm. Yeah. The whole point of going to church is because they calm you down. <laughs> There's soft music playing. Someone's talking in a calm voice. Yeah. And he's not exactly that into it as well. He'll say sometimes like, oh, I'm not really up for it, I'm really tired. And I'm like, oh my God, he doesn't support me. And I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it. Like I do take things very personally. Those who believe in star signs, all I need to tell you is that I'm a cancer. So I will like sometimes get like quite upset and then I'll be like, right, I'll go then. And I'll be sat there at the church and my mom like, <laughs> Trying to hold a conversation with us and me not to get distracted. Oh yeah, actually that is quite a big Because as much as I want to kind of sit there and just have like a normal, like long conversation and I'll get to a point where like I start to kind of, my mind drifts off and I lose track of what's happened. And I say to her like, can you say that bit again? Like, I've, I've, I've forgot what you said. And I'm like. <laughs> and she's like, she's like, I don't, you're not listening properly. One of the biggest um, things in my life is video games. It's a form of media that always keeps you like hooked and always keeps you interested and there's always competition. Loads of things going on like um, it's it's like going into different worlds. Keeps me awake, keeps me feeling alive. Is that as weird as that sound? Like on if, a whole nother level, because other people yeah. can relate to that, but yours is literally like it keeps yeah. you running. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I could be doing better things with my time, but it's something that I, I really enjoy doing and something that really helps. You're gonna be that like seventy year old man who's like on the newest gadget. Oh yeah. I'll be the cool grandpa. <laughs>
He's cool because he has to be. It keeps I have him to be. alive. <laughs> exactly. Um, that being said, that's like a coping mechanism. Yeah, that's what it is, really. I feel everyone's probably going to have their own stuff. Like, I, that's a good question, actually. If there is anyone in the same boat as Adam, like, what's your kind of way of feeling buzzed and yeah. without drugs? <laughs> <laughs> there's, like, support groups everywhere. There's there's a few support groups happening on Facebook. Um, there's official communities, like, yeah. dedicated to um, support for uh, pernicious anemia and stuff like that. I think it's but... good, even if you don't have it, if you've got someone close to you that has it, to join one. Because I did, because of it the fact to I kept forgetting. And then there's obviously, which isn't what he can do, but you can have liver and stuff. Yeah, so there's one thing I actually tried because <laughs> uh, when I heard that um, liver was like... Raw the, liver. Yeah, like raw liver was the most B12 rich thing you could find. And that's what how they used to, cu- not cure it, but manage it back in the day. Which is quite interesting in a way because people who have pernicious, pernicious anemia, because tablets traditionally are kind of are consumed in the same way that... Um, food is consumed which is typically not how my body would accept b12 mm. so some people who have pernicious anemia recommend trying things like oral sprays um mm, or like liquids nice. um things like that which i've actually used for quite a long time i use it more so when i'm feeling particularly bad um, which leads me in yes to pure thrive so the reason why I decided to give this a try and I was really excited to tell Adam about was because of the way it was presented was differently to other stuff that I've seen. So there's lots of like tablets and stuff that I get emailed about. But then this one kind of approached differently and there was a lot more like studies and stuff because the way the B12 was absorbed, which is what Adam was touching on before. Yeah. You use this on your cheeks as well because inside yeah <laughs> you don't go like that <laughs> <laughs> on the inside um, get all that good b12 because that way it absorbs differently to what a tablet would for example yeah. and a lot of the other um types of similar products i've seen online do this is on the same wavelength as what adam's taught me for, for like years about how his condition is so i think it's it like kind of gets absorbed through your skin and uh, it gets it to your bloodstream easier. There's videos and stuff. I can link you to all of their things down there in the description, which is worth looking at because if anyone's in the same sort of boat and they want to give something a try, because we're doing a review on this in this video and obviously every experience is going to be different. And from hearing what Adam's gone through, if I was in his boat, like I'd be up for trying different things. I mean, he was saying that he just tried like live raw liver for a little while. Yeah. He was making them into freaking tablets and swallowing them. Yeah. Since learning about how you can actually develop this disease from being a vegetarian, it's believed. I can't say that for sure. It is like a little bit, it is worrying. And I do think, not that I'm pregnant now, but I do think like in the future, like what am I going to do? Like when you'd, I get you'd, there. You'd be like super paranoid if yeah. you were pregnant. I don't actually have any problems with energy levels, I feel. But what I do struggle with is concentration and focus yeah. because as a self-employed person, you're so distracted with like the things around you. And if I'm not going to feel the energy benefits, mm. Am I gonna focus better? Bonjour, this is our first test of the Pura Thrive. I believe it's 10, uh, eight pumps mm-hmm. under the tongue or on the tongue? That you spray on the inside of your cheeks and under your tongue because you absorb it better. Okay. If you have it on, on your cheeks and under your tongue. Nervous. But if you just put it on your tongue, obviously it'll just get around your mouth anyway, won't it? I'm noticing effects more so than Adam is. We kind of expected this because his body just like pushes it away basically. It sees the B12 and and rejects it. When I wake up and I feel like, oh my God, I'm so tempted to go back to sleep in a nap. I just like spray a bit in my mouth. If you've tried everything, if you've had problems with energy levels, if you are someone who you think would benefit from something like this, if you do struggle, uh, with just focusing, concentrating. Um, it is definitely worth a try. And I'm not just saying that because this, this is a sponsor. I'm saying it because it's because it's your life. Like you don't, I see my boyfriend struggling so, so much. And it's it angers me to know that there's a condition that ca- kind of just makes you tired all the time, makes you not really live life to the fullest. And it's unfair and it's sad. I will say though, I forgot to take this when I went down south. Me, uh, my sisters visited up north recently as a surprise and then straight afterwards we went back down south together for a weekend i forgot to take this and um i did feel very lethargic but we had been doing it a lot 
So like I couldn't really tell once again. You know, it is hard. It is really hard to test things like this out. God, the, my toaster is like reflecting the sun on my face. Ooh. Good morning, everyone. It is a Thursday morning. My first, my only actually initial differences that I noticed was it helped me with focus because that is something that I wanted it to help me with. That is something I felt like I lacked rather than energy levels. I know that my attention span and kind of like my easy way of kind of getting distracted, especially when you work for yourself, it's very, very easy to get distracted. So that's kind of how I wanted it to, to um, benefit me. It has been over a month now and I didn't remember to take it as often as I wanted to. I did keep forgetting, but I reminded myself because I did feel like a lull in my kind of energy and I just felt a bit more tired. And that is very common for supplements. Like you really, you don't realize what they're doing until you're not kind of on them. But I would say like focus comes first. I think the, the focus part is something I can actually notice. The great thing about this is there is actually, and I didn't actually know this until right this minute. I mean, maybe I did, but I forgot, but there is actually a money back guarantee so that goes to show that their whole purpose is to say give it a try it might benefit you and if it doesn't it doesn't matter because you get your money back for you i feel like this would work better though for when you need it it might do that's a good point actually definitely up to try that out it's just it was kind of for you it was more like an interesting experiment like mm -hmm. for me i'm just going to be like everyone else technically because of his condition and the way that they promote this product as dif like, differently to every every other B12 mm -hmm. supplement I've seen because most are like tablet form, which basically means it just sits in the gut, right? And like distributes yeah. differently around the body. Right. Um, it's the way that it's kind of like broken down in like a really small cell. So like it's an absorption technology. I think it's called micelle. I don't know if I'm going to get that right. It's that like tiny little um, guy there, the circle, the small circle. It's a type of technology that carries the nutrients from the purified right into your bloodstream and it's less than 10 to 20 nanometers. So it's like very, 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 very small in order for that to do that. So they carry it directly into the intestinal tract. <laughs> Where they sciencey words for you. Yep, yeah, where they are released and absorbed into your bloodstream, but they've put more time into the actual process, um, and they've broken it down. Like I said, there's loads of different uh, studies on the website. Like I just pulled that up from literally just googling Purify. That's basically why I was saying I was more intrigued for, for Adam to try this mm. than other ones because it's almost like I'm on the, on the hunt for a miracle cure. That's not yeah. necessarily going to fix it, but to to give us that kind of uh, difference. And I saw what, what they were saying and then I saw what what your condition means and I kind of put the two together and thought, yeah. ooh, like this could be something uh -huh. worth trying. I'll try anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything that has the potential to help at all, especially if it's a new product, it's exciting because it could be the thing that suddenly changes everything in my life. It could Imagine. literally change my life. Yeah. But, but it's important to know that if you do have low B12 levels in general or um, you feel really tired all the time or you have pernicious anemia, you need to go and get checked out. Yeah. And you need to get those injections if you do have the disease. Yes. Start by like getting the diagnosis. Yeah, get diagnosed and then first. work with anything that you want to try. Like um, you said, you, you can't overdose on B12. So if no. you're getting injections and you're taking tablets and you're taking sprays yeah. or these sort of things, you, you're not going to have any issues from that. <laughs> and you can also put this in like smoothies apparently, like you can put it in your porridge. Yeah. Apparently there's I remember like, you saying that, but I didn't really think of doing yeah, it. Yeah, there's a number of different ways. To me, I just felt like it's easier just to kind of, yeah. like, it's done then that way. Um, I don't know much about it, but I know that you can give B12 in different forms. So you can get like activated uh, types of B12 and stuff like that. So some, some okay. forms of B12 uh, work quick because mm -hmm. they're already like activated to be uh, used in your body. Mm -hmm some forms are like s slow work and things and stuff like that so cool try different things honestly like it's it's worth giving things a try it's worth trying this so i think we spoke our little heads off yeah i think we've just put everyone else to sleep yeah <laughs> now you've all got beef drop deficiency yeah, we've, <laughs> <laughs> we've just inflicted it on the audience that is all for this video thank you adam for opening up about something personal sorry it's, it's one of those things where i've always felt embarrassed to talk about really well yeah because I just like put no, a no, light no. on your face it's and like fine. talk about it. No, it's it's something I've always wanted to kind of talk about, but it's like where and when is the best time. Yes. Like this is probably the best way to do it because if someone watches this and they feel like they might relate in some way. If you need 
a bunch of people to discuss this with, then use this video because people who aren't used to my channel will probably find this video because yeah. it will have like B12 in the title or whatever. So talk, discuss. I'm gonna cut this video short. No, it's not even short. It's a long ass video. I'm gonna cut this video. Good luck editing Ellie. Anything else? No, no thank, you. thank you for giving me a platform <laughs> to talk. No, no, genuinely. I want to gather up a little <laughs> a little pool of people who have the same thing. B12 crew. Yeah, B12 crew. What we'll, we'll thing is something like cooler than well, that? <laughs> the lack of B12 Let's crew. Let's start a hashtag. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm on social media, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And <laughs> I also do tarot readings, the book one today, yo. See you. Thanks, Air Freshener. <laughs> See you. <laughs> We need to do a thumbnail. Bye.